Hey, this is Jody with WeldingTipsAndTricks.com. Thanks for watching another weekly video. I've been a little heavy on TIG lately, so I decided to mix it up and throw a stick welding video in here. It's just going to be doing lap joints today on 11 gauge steel. I'm starting off using a 6013, even though I hardly ever use 6013s. I know a lot of people do, so we're going to talk about it a little bit today. First joint here, we're using about 105 amps on DC electrode positive. 6013s will run on any polarity, AC or DC, EN or EP. The reason I don't really like them that much is it's kind of hard for me to see the difference between the puddle and the slag. It just kind of all mixes together, and if you ever have to uh, weld a little bit downhill or even at a downhill angle, it'll mix together sometimes and, and you'll get worm beds and you'll run a bead on both sides, but it doesn't join and there's just slag in the middle. So really that's the key for me to, to 6013s is making sure I have it hot enough making sure I use enough amps to have some arc force to kind of drive that slag back in the puddle. And that was 105 amps. I'm going to switch it up to 115 amps here, still well within the range. The range chart that I looked at listed at 80 to 130 amps. And then another one had it all the way up to 150 amps, so you know, it just depends on what you look at. But this is 115 amps here and a little bit nicer actually. Slag comes off a little bit easier. Ripples are a little tighter. Still within the range, like I said. Now I'm going on the outside of the range on the low side now. You can see what a problem that is. The arc doesn't even want to stay lit and when it does it's, it's jumping to one side and not even welding both pieces together. And there it's having a hard time keeping it lit. So, Really, the only way you can keep it keep one lit at that low an amperage is long arcing it like this. And I don't really like to long arc it because then you can get into all those problems I, I mentioned before about it wanting to weld on one side or the other and having a worm bed in there. So low amperage, if you're having to long arc it just to keep it lit, you need more amperage. Compare this with a, with a nice long arc and you can't really, everything's just kind of running together. This is like, again, a 75 amps, but just having the long arc to hold it together. Compare that to 115 amps here. You can see the arc force just pushing down the crater of the puddle and driving the slag back to the back of the puddle, and that's a good thing. If all you have is an AC buzz box like this, 6013 is a good choice, but it's not the only choice. 6011 is also designed to run on AC, and they even make... 7018 AC rods specifically des designed to run on alternating current. So I'm going to weld the bead here with a 7018 AC. It's a little bit hot. You can see some spatter popping out of the puddle there. But still running pretty smooth. And the slag comes off pretty easy with some nice fine ripples. Now one of my favorite rods is the Lincoln Excalibur 7018 and it runs really well on DC electrode positive at 90 amps for with a 332nd anyway. Camera doesn't really doesn't really show what I'm used to seeing here but the, for me the the puddle is much easier to distinguish from the slag. And also get, grab some thicker metal here. We'll go a little uphill just to mix things up a little bit. I like, I like to use this little uh, trace the puddle method. Actually, it's kind of a series of triangles. You trace the puddle and pause on, pause on the, the sides. Don't spend much time across the middle. And you can see I'm kind of letting, it, letting that puddle wander over just a little bit and lap over the edge a little bit too much. And so the finished weld here, you can see it's a little bit scallopy there on the right-hand side. So went over there a little too far. But sometimes, like especially with this 11 gauge, you need to go downhill. So what we're doing here, we're using that AC buzz box with a 6011 1 8th going downhill. And you don't have to do any motion at all. You can do a little side, sideways motion, a little forward and back, a little whip and pause. But it's a good rod for welding downhill because it's got a very light slag coating and a fast freeze puddle. And even if you have a little gap like this, you can just use a little bit more of a whip and pause, come out of the puddle a little bit, and it cools it off and does a good job. Now it makes it a little uglier 
of a weld, not nearly as smooth, but it definitely gets the job done. All right, well, those are the tips for today. Thanks for watching again. Visit WeldingTipsAndTricks.com.